Welcome back to the fun part of Practice by Numbers. We're now looking at overhead. Um, if you haven't watched the other video about mapping, you need to stop this video, go back and watch that if you're new with Practice by Numbers. Um, because what we are going to look into now is how QuickBooks can connect with Practice by Numbers and give us real data. So I'm Laura from Front Office Rocks. I'm an office manager and I'm a trainer. And I am trying to become more proactive with my um, business, with my husband who's a dentist. And he's always telling me we're spending too much. Our overhead is too high. So I'm here with Rohit from Practice by Numbers. And I'm going to start to watch our overhead to see if we're really too high or not. I, mean, I have been watching it, but this is so much easier. So I'm going to hand this over to Rohit. And he's going to show us once you get the, the, the right accounts mapped together what we can see with Practice by Numbers. Okay, great. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Laura. So as uh, we have talked about in the previous video, once you have your accounts mapped up, um, it's, it's pretty easy to do the mapping. And also remember, it's non-destructive. So if you map something and it, it didn't turn out to be right and it was a wrong category, just go back and change it. Okay? And this is, this is going to give you immediate feedback on what's going on. For example, this is one of, one of the dummy practices. We're looking at the year to date data. So we're looking at from 1-1-2017 uh, to 6-2-2017. Okay, so this is showing us that this particular practice has 51% overhead based on how we have mapped this practice. Remember we talked about everything, every single category that is in that mapping shows up under the overhead except one big category, which was owner expenses, okay? So if you have any owner expenses, like if you're paying the owner a salary, if you're paying, the, paying for the owner's boat and you're paying for the owner's trips to Switzerland, it's, they all go under owner expenses because and they are sure not. Have it set up so the staff can't see that because <laughs> you'll get a lot of pushback. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So that's not, that's not your office overhead, right? That's that, those, are, those are considered completely owner expenses because if the practice ever go, gets sold to a different owner, those expenses might be there, might not be there. Yes, of course, the salary would be there, but there's no point including the salary in the office overhead for single doctor owned or individual practices because you really want to measure your overhead, just your office overhead. Okay, so what does it look like? It's going to give you these categories over here. So I'm going to change this a little bit more so we have a little bit more complete data. So I'm going to go back to the end of next month. So here we are looking at this practice and it's giving me the overhead for each month. Okay, first of all, it's very visual so you can see what's going on in the overhead. You can, you can, you can plot graphs, you can, you can plot item mini, uh, year over year. And if I, even if I want to go back, and I might actually just go back to let's say, let's go to 2016. And uh, no, actually this doesn't change the year, but uh, let's say we can just look at the last uh, 12 months of data right here. Okay, so it's gonna tell me last June, we had about $50,000 in expenses. And this May we have had about $59,000 as well, right? Or 50 to 59. So this year the overhead went up by almost $9,000. And here we can click on individual categories. So this is showing me. What did you just click on to do that? I just clicked on the category. So I want to just do a little bit of an analysis on each category. So I just clicked on the biggest category, which is payroll expenses right here. Okay. And it drilled down into the payroll expense. So I'm looking at what's happening in terms of payroll expense. Staff salaries of $28,000 versus a staff salary of $20,000. So what's happened in this practice is the overall overhead has gone up by 9,000 and $8,000 out of that has been contributed directly from staff salaries. Okay. Maybe a good thing, maybe not a good thing. Uh, and that good gives to me, know, but definitely good to know. It's good to know. And that gives me an idea that maybe we need to change this graph and include the overhaul overhead percentage because it is possible that the overhead went up, but from a percentage standpoint, it did not go up at all. That it right. went up at the same rate as the office, as the production grew. So even though it may look alarming, it might not be an issue at all. Okay. Sure. Uh, so looking at it visually is very important. So payroll is only one area. So let's look at, uh, let's say our 
facility expenses. What's happening in that case? This includes your rent, this includes your janitorial, it includes all of your, uh, basically anything to run the physical, uh, physically run the facility, okay? And to see what's going on with the, with, with the facility expenses as well, it's, it's good to see what are the trends. So outside of the trends, let's talk about what each number should be, okay? So this office, year to date, first five months, their overhead is about 48%. Okay? I think it's a pretty well-run office if it was a real office. And their payroll expenses are about 23%. Now you ask what should be a payroll expense for individual practices, and my answer would be that it should be anywhere from 20% to about 25, 26%. So if you are running heading close to 30%, you're probably overstaffed. Mm -hmm. okay. Depending on if it's an owner-owned practice or if it's a, it's a second or a third practice, those can get heavier on the payroll side. Uh, supplies should be anywhere from three, four percent to about six, seven percent. If it's anything higher than that, there's something funny going on in there. And I was going to mention, if you're starting to look at this numbers and these are new to you, you can go online and get, there's always new breakdowns if you look online for what percentage should be at. The second thing is, is if, you're, if your percentage seems extremely high, go back to the mapping and make sure you didn't map something incorrectly. Um, and then lastly, don't let these numbers freak you out, like we got to go fire somebody tomorrow. Um, you know, look at the numbers so you can see what's going on and then start watching some of the other statistics in your office because maybe with the staff you have, you should be producing more. Yeah. And so let's look at the, be the better end of it. So there's a lot of different ways to analyze these numbers. So if you, once you know this, there's a practice by numbers on Facebook group, join the group, throw out your numbers and you can get some ideas of, of what you can do in these percentages. I just want to put that out there because we could get really narrow focused on some of this and and you could be up all night looking at these numbers and I don't want to stress anybody out. No, no. And, and you don't want to, you don't want to shoot off the cuff either. Meaning the numbers are what they are and you have to do a little bit of an analysis and figure out what situation your practice and your staff and everybody are in and then make a good decision. Right. Yeah. And there are so people what, to help. what else do we see here that we, that we need to know about? So the other things to look at over here is a um, couple of things are what is your deposit ratio? Most doctors don't track that. Okay, what does that mean? What has been, uh, of everything that's been collected, how much of that has actually made the bank, has gotten to the bank? Okay. Right? And that's very important to know because if people get disassociated with their bookkeeping and who's collecting, that's a clear place where embezzlement occurs. Well, shouldn't that be 100%? Is there a reason why? I know this is a, a fake account, but isn't that alarming right there? That's alarming right there. Okay. Right? That is alarming. How come they collected 723 and only 649 has been deposited? Huh. But now here's the thing. It is only the 2nd of June. So it sure. is possible that their, state, their deposits haven't quite made it to the bank yet. Sure. Okay. okay. So... Good to know, though. Again, another number to watch because you know how many people get embezzled against that Good in our know, industry. Right. So. so let's go back just one month. Let's look at from, from March, sorry, uh, January through April and see what that number looks like. 100%. Excellent. 100%, right? So within a few, uh, there's still a discrepancy of about $400, but not, not a huge number. Anybody who's ever been embezzled against needs practice by number. So if you know somebody in our industry that has one of those bad stories, this is not that this is going to fix it, but this is the first step is really paying attention to what's going on in your practice. So that's awesome. I love that. Yeah, that's, that, that's very useful. The other thing that people look at, and I tell every single office manager to know this number. I mean, now you don't want to look at the whole profitability numbers and everything with, 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 with everybody in your staff, but the office manager needs to understand what is the office overhead per hour, okay? And what does this mean? This means every single hour the office is seeing patients, how much money is going out without the doctor making a single, single buck. Now, I wouldn't share this number with the exact, this is the bare minimum number. This is to pay all the expenses. What I would do is I would share the number that includes the doctor's base salary into it. Okay, so that they understand what do they need to need to book hourly, so they're not ending up putting five kids right next to each other, and that happens. Uh, so they understand where this number is coming from. This is this is the 
overhead per hour. This is the fixed overhead per hour. But she I'm also- envisioning, I'm envisioning front office rocks videos to add to my office manager training now that I have this access to help office managers and doctors because everybody needs to understand. They think that everybody, the doctors take all the money home and they don't realize what it costs to run our business. So this is great. Yeah. And also another thing to understand is how much of that was fixed versus variable. And remember we talked about in the previous video, you have to map which one is a fixed overhead, which one is a variable overhead. Yep. Why is this important? If your office runs late and you end up opening the office an extra hour, this is how much it costs you. If you open the office an extra half an hour, this half of this is what costs you. Yep. So understanding that variable versus fixed overhead is very important so you can decide, hey, if I open another day, my fixed expenses don't change, but here's what goes up. I increase my overhead by $2,600 for each day that I open for this particular practice. Right. And, and there's other areas in the hair. I think we may be perhaps out of time, but I will just quickly touch on that, which is understanding provider profitability. So each practice has hygienists, they have associates and they have others. So when you go into the provider profitability, what it does is it puts side by side how much did each provider produce versus how much did they get paid. Okay, so let's just take a quick example of one of the hygienists in this office. So if I bring this up, now well, this is a part-time hygienist. If you can find a full-time hygienist over here. Okay, this is a little bit more of a hygienist that works more full-time. This particular hygienist produced $48,000 and they collected, meaning they got paid $16,000. And their earnings rate over a period of four months was about 33%. Most doctors, if I ask them, how much, what percentage do you pay your hygienist? They'll be like, I, I, don't, I don't know, I pay them hourly. And I pay them $42 an hour or $39 an hour. But they don't understand what is the actual hourly rate that they're paying them. Right. And this is what this hygienist is costing this office, which is $57 an hour. Right. Okay. Because that's how long she saw patients. She didn't see patients for the times because the time sheet might be nine hours long, but she may only be seeing patients for eight hours, seven and a half hours. So this is really measuring their true hourly rate when they're actually seeing patients. So I can stop here uh, unless you have any other questions, Laura. No, actually, if you can just go back, because this is great. And, and I have a feeling you and I, once we get this broken down, we're going to dig into more of what the numbers mean, because I'm super excited about this. Can you explain, uh, the only other question I have is for owner's expenses, <clears throat> why have it drafted out there? What is, what is the point of keeping track of, is that to, to say, all right, why does it seem like we, our overhead is high, but when we look at these expenses, it really goes on top if you're paying for the doctor's boat or if we're paying for CE, is that why it's listed there? Exactly, so that you can spread out, you can split out the expenses that could be discretionary okay. or, or the expenses that are not to run the office. These are okay. for the owner. So, and also let's say, you, you, if you ever see somebody selling a practice and if you see evaluation, you will always see the overall expenses and then they take out all of the owner related expenses. Okay. Those are really not practice related expenses and they vary widely, right? I mean, there'll be some owners who are paying for their boats and other owners who are paying for their helicopter. So it just depends yeah. on the. Uh, well, and then doctors also, I, I tend to be the office manager. If you feel like you're not making any money, let's look at this is extra, this is coming out of your practice, but this is going into something in your lifestyle. So, yeah. and also, excellent. Oh, Another thing to look at is not meaning we were on that topic is sometimes I see the supplies overhead in the 10, 12% and I have to ask them. So what are you buying? Yeah. What are you buying? Are you buying your home supplies through your office budgets? Uh -huh, right. And it, and that happens. Yeah. Right. Definitely. Well, what this and what we say in all these videos is the, you can't know how you're doing and fix it if you don't know where your numbers are. So now when you sit down, um, this is actually going to be a great thing for my husband and I sit down together and go and with his business partner, all right, where are our expenses? And does this mean we need to cut expenses or grow or, or what do we want to do? And if, you, if you're making decisions without having the data, you're just guessing. So that's why I love practice by numbers. Um, I'm with front office rocks and what we do is we take these numbers and then teach you how to get better in your practice. So I'm excited that I found um, practice by numbers so that I can start to improve 
my office and then hopefully help a lot of my clients with this. So thank you, Rohit. I'm excited. As soon as we're done with this video, I'm going to go back and map mine and start seeing what our expenses are down to the what the doctor's getting. <laughs> All right. Perfect. That'll be an interesting discussion with the doctors in the office. Exactly. Perfect. If anybody has any questions, again, um, reach out to Front Office Rocks or Rohit and then definitely join um, Practice by Numbers on Facebook and Front Office Rocks on Facebook. We have lots of discussions around all of these topics, so they'll definitely help you move your practice forward. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Laura. Bye. Bye.